Good day Grade 11s, welcome to this next lesson on statistics. In this lesson we're going to learn about cumulative frequency graphs. So this is what a cumulative frequency graph looks like. They're also known as ogives or ogives depending on who you talk to. I call them ogives. They reflect the cumulative frequency. In other words, they reflect the running total of the frequency that's typically S-shaped. So the best way to get to understand how a cumulative frequency works, table graph works, is to do an example. So they tell us we've got a group of learners achieve the following marks out of 30 and we've got our marks and a number of learners. Now we need to draw up a cumulative frequency table. So let's do that. So we've got our marks and we have our table and you'll notice the table now doesn't just have the marks it also has and the frequency it has a cumulative frequency so let's start with the marks being let's start at 20 so let's go 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 and 29. Now if we look at this we can see the frequency that we have of each of these is going to be two people got 20, three people got 21, five people got 22, five people got 23, seven people got 24, 10 people got 25, 13 people got 26 and then it starts dropping down again, five, four and two. Now, we want the cumulative frequency. So the cumulative frequency so far is 2. The cumulative frequency of this is 2 plus 3, which equals 5. That means we can say that 5 people got 21 and less. Okay. Now, if we add another 5 to this, so we go 5 plus 5, we'll get the cumulative frequency of 10. So we can say 10 people got 22 or less. If we add this to that running total, we got 5 plus 10, we end up with 15. So now we know we've got 15 people who got 23 and less. So you can understand why this is important. Then if we add 15 plus 7, we get our 22. 20, 22 plus 10 gives us 32. 13 plus our 32 gives us 45, 45 plus 5 gives me 50, 50 plus 4 gives me 54 and finally 54 plus my 2 gives me 56 and if you add these up you will see that this also comes to a total of 56 and these should obviously add up because it's basically adding up all the people who took your test. Right, so now we're going to use this cumulative frequency table to draw our cumulative frequency graph or the ogive. So I've copied out the table already and what we're going to do now is we're going to plot. Okay, so we've got the marks of 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. And we're going to plot. So, and luckily for us, we've got a very nice piece of graph paper that's already got the numbers of our cumulative frequency on our table. So we can see that two people got 20. We have got five people, which is over here, because that's two, four. Six, so we've got five people got 21. We have got 10 people who got 22 and less. We got 15 people, which is over here. Ah, I made a mistake. I missed a square. Let me just go find my eraser. Mr. Square. Okay, let's carry on. So we got for 22 we've got 10 people, for 23 we've got 15 people, so for 24 we've got 22 people, 22, for 25 we've got 32 people, so 25 goes all the way up to 32, 
26 goes up to 45 so that there is 40 42 45 27 27 goes up to 50 where is 50 it's over there and then 28 is 54 and finally 29 is 56 and we have to always join it to zero so you can see that it does give a kind of an S shape it should give us a bit of an S shape okay now again grade 11's remember that you have pencils and erasers so I don't expect that to be happening on your graph right so there is our graph. Now, now you've drawn your kilometer frequency graph, we can actually use it to find things like your first quartile, your median and your upper quartile. So let's have a look at how to do that. So to determine the lower quartile, we know that we've got 56 people that wrote this test. So to find the lower quartile, what do we do? We say, well, well, we've got 56 plus 1 divided by quarter. That's the easiest way to find your lower quartile, which is going to be 14.25. That means the lower quartile lies between the 14th and 15th learner's mark. So grade 11s, I like to tell my students, this is the only place that I know of where you actually read off the y-axis to get the x value. Usually we do x value to y. So it's between the 14th and 15th, the 14th and 15th learner's mark. So year is 14 and year is 16. So that there is more or less where it is. So I'm going to drop it down and you'll see it's approximately 23. So therefore the lower quartile is approximately 23. Now to determine the median, we're going to take half of 56 plus 1, which is 28.5. So therefore, again, the median lies between the 28th and 29th learner. So therefore, that's 28 and that's 30. So I'm going to take my line across here. And I'm going to drop it down over here. And you can see that it's much closer to 25 than 24. So I would say almost that that is 24.75. Finally, we can get the upper quartile, which again is now going to be 3 quarters times 56 plus 1, which is 42.75. So again, the upper quartile lies between the 42nd and 43rd. So it's closer to 42. So we go along here. And we go down here, it gets close enough to this line that I can use that line. So we're going down this line and that is 26. So my upper quartile is 26. So I could actually use this to draw my bus, box and whisker diagram because we've got Q1 over there, which is Q1. We've got Q2, which is over here. We've got Q3. And we would also have obviously the smallest number and the largest number because we made it from the table. So grade 11s, do you see how you can use your cumulative frequency diagram to work out your spread, your range, your interquartile range of your data? And that is it, grade 11s. That is your OGAV or your cumulative frequency graph. It looks intimidating initially but it's actually very easy. Please go practice and then do the examples at the end of the assessment. Have a good day.